is Booker T. Washington on, on the right here. And uh, there's a portrait of Booker T. And I have some other works that I've been working on in here. But, you know, I want to read something about Booker T. This is this was written by Booker T. Washington. This is Booker T. Washington's book here. He was one of the authors. And this is what he said about himself. And, you know, it's very seldom you get the chance to read the autobiography of a guy. You know, Booker T. Washington, Principal Booker T. Washington. And I was born, this is what it says, I was born a slave on the plantation in Virginia in 1857 or 1858, I think. My first memory of life is that of a one-room log cabin with a dirt floor and a hole in the center to serve as a winter home for sweet potatoes and wrapped in a few rags on this dirt floor I spent my nights and clad in the single garment about the plantation I often spent my days. The morning of freedom came and though a child, I recall vaguely, my parents with the 40 or 50 slaves before the fender of the big house to hear word documents and made us men instead of property. With the long prey for freedom and actual possession of each. You know, looking at these guys' lives and what they spent, you know, it's, it's sometimes it makes you just wonder how life really were. But this guy actually wrote down his actual autobiography and explained. I had never heard it to this degree until I read this passage. You know, my speech is impaired to a degree. I lost 14 of my teeth to the chemotherapy from where I was taken, uh, when I was diagnosed with esophageal cancer. And my life point is right here. It's where I took my chemo and my radiation in, the, in my chest and my sides and in my back. But I lost 14 of my teeth and uh, it makes it difficult for me to pronounce certain words and it's embarrassing, okay? But anyway, beyond all the embarrassment, through it all, whatsoever the case may be, I find myself as a man with no plan. How can I have a plan for anything? And my days are being cut short. Now, my only venue of escape are through my heart. No, I'm not going to even compare myself with the best. I'm not even going to put myself with the worst. Because art is art. And I love it. I mean I love it. So anyway, I'm working on the flowers. I'm going to do a set of flowers here. I'm going to have a vase in this. I'm going to have uh, maybe a couple of pieces of fruit or whatnot. Um, but I'm going to have something similar to a big rose and a tulip, I would guess. I'm not that familiar with plants, you know, but I will draw them. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be drawing this in. And I got, I got a little rough outline. And I'm going to be putting these lines in, getting my basic shape of what I'm going to be doing. Not lives. I kicked around quite a bit. Well, these just, let me just put these little shapes in here. So our lives be kicked around. Sometimes it just seems like it's better not to have been born. They have to fight something of this nature all the time. 
I'm in pain right now. I'm in uh, what some people call excruciating pain. I'm, I'm trying to I, I cope with it. I bear it along with it. And it deals with me severely. It's dealing with me right about now. But it's a condition. It might be in a condition. It let me know that I have to cope with it. Yes, it does. And by being the condition, see our lives are full of conditions. <laughs> and like I'm dealing with this condition, you have to deal with yours. Regardless how things get you down, you got to always remember. There's a positive sign to it all. And we have to think positive. Now we need to sharpen my pencil. Now what I'm using, I put a, a water. I, uh, I'm using a Felix. And I had did a wash. And I put my background tones in. And I'm putting, uh, well, I have my background tones in where my, my flower is going to be. Like my rose head or whatever it is. Uh, and my, Tulip, I guess. I'm not all that great on naming flowers, okay? But I am gonna do I'm gonna draw it, that's for sure. That's for certain. Now what I'm trying to do is get my use colors. I'm using also pastels. Okay? So I knew the I knew the combination between them both. And by me using the pastels. I'm able to pull colors, then I use waters, I'm able to blend colors. I just play with it the way I want. This is my canvas, and this, this is my paper. And I know the fire, art don't have no rules to define. You know, they wasn't defining rules when they was drawing those hieroglyphics in those caves. So we're gonna run this old flower up. The flower got some jagged edges, you know. Then it's all kind of way, you know, just throw it on in there, okay? And this one's gonna be pink. And I need the color as close as I can get to it. Yeah, that's right. And therefore, make it look like something. Okay? Now, we got that part in. And uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay? Oh boy. Yeah. Now I'm gonna deal with this. Where I'm gonna put my leaves. Ready to sharpen my pencil again. A lot of you have to keep these sharpened. Name by me, they're still just brick easy. But then again, I sharpen them. I have to wear these glasses. Therefore, they have to be clean. And this is how you clean the glasses. There's an art to everything. Okay? Now, yep. There is an art to it all. Now, what I'm about to do here is I'm going to put my leaves in, put that ground, the leaf. You hear that? I told you my speech is impaired, the out ground. What is that? I want to see the background, the out ground. Yeah, I 
I guess they say that guy. He did it as well. Seeing stuff like that. No, definitely not an idiot. May not be the brightest light in the in the room. An idiot, nah. Not hardly. Oh, the idiots don't do this, baby. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to throw a little bit of that in there. Yeah. Let's see. I think I'm going to. Do it like that. Do it that way. Okay. Now we got basically this in here. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Now what I'm going to do? I'm going to start putting these colors in, and I'm going to work with this, but. And gonna say it's the way you work here. Yeah. But anyway, go deal with you guys in your lifestyles and looking at what our life starts today. Therefore, and what I do, I take this hand here and I place it and use it to work off for it. Okay. And therefore I don't get much smudges. Now with the pastels, it's very easy to smudge. Very, very, very easy to smudge. Okay? And that seemed like it's a, it's a rule of the past few years, you know. And uh, that's basically how that works. Now, in here are the jewel box, okay? This is my jewel box here. I have a new one in here, but I won't need it. And what I will do here is I start rubbing this in, start blending my colors. So now, one thing about an artist, you must be able to see, my friend. Okay? And I had to change these glasses to these bow focus. And of course, they need to be clean. But anyway, I use this to put these colors together. But Life is worth living, and I don't have no intention of giving up at all. And my advice to anyone out there that think that they need to give up on any cause, don't please, don't, 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 don't take life that way. Life is worth living. Believe me. Believe me, it is worth living. Um, I don't have a long time. I know that. But I got to hold up for my family. I'm trying to put together this collection here that even if it don't be used for the uniqueness of the artwork, but at least it can be used as some sort of a metaphor of how, as a patient, 
diagnosed with cancer, was able to escape through a form of art. 